Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to find the deflection and slope of this simply supported beam with a point load occurring one quarter of the way away from one side. Uh, we're gonna call that point C. What we wanna do is we wanna find the deflection and slope at this point when we apply a point load there. So this is actually a really nasty problem. It looks innocent, but really this thing takes forever to solve. So we're gonna be fast forwarding a lot of the work, but I still wanna go through the whole process. So what we need to do to get started is we need to draw basically our free body diagram doing simple statics and figure out that our reaction at A is going to be 3 quarters, uh, 3 fourths times P, and that our reaction at B here, RB, is going to equal 1 quarter times P. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out from section A to C we want to figure out what the expression is in terms of x for the internal moment. So the internal moment is 3 fourths p times x. And it is m1, we're calling this section 1 from a to c. Uh, m1 is equal to 3 fourths px. All right, we also want to find out what the moment is in terms of x uh, for this section here from c to b. And we get that internal moment in this section is 1 quarter pl minus 1 quarter px. Okay, so now basically what we want to do is the same as we've been doing in the previous videos. We want to use the expression where we have um, d squared y over dx squared is equal to the expression for the moment in terms of x over ei. And we want to plug in our moments for each. Uh, we're going to do each section separately. And, uh, and then we want to integrate each of those twice. And then we basically want to combine those all because we're going to get four. Uh, we're going to get a whole bunch of unknowns. We're going to solve them all at the same time. So on the left-hand side uh, for section one, when we integrate twice, we get the expression for theta and also the expression for y. And then we can go and do the exact same thing for section two, and we'll find the expression for theta two and y two. And notice in section two that we're getting integration constants c3 and c4. So in total, we actually have four integration constants. We have c1, c2, c3, and c4. And we're going to have to solve for all of these basically simultaneously before we can actually figure out um, the, the deflection and the slope uh, at any given point within section one or section two. So I'm gonna throw a box around, uh, around this one because this is, maybe I'll make that a little bit taller. This is going to be a very important expression for us that we'll have to come back to, and same with this. Because once we solve for C1, C2, C3, and C4, then these will basically become our expressions uh, that we can uh, describe the, any part of the beam with. Okay, now in order to solve for these four integration constants, we need to use our boundary conditions that we can actually observe from the drawing here. So let's maybe change a color to something else. And let's figure out what boundary conditions we have. We're going to have four that we need to use, and it'll actually be two per section, where the sections are A to C and C to B. So I know that I can look at this and I see that at X, maybe uh, let's just fix that, um, at X equals zero, uh, not X is zero, at X equals zero, our displacement is going to be zero, right? Because the displaced, uh, shape of the beam will be something like this. It'll be sagging down somewhere in between A and B, and we can see that uh, A and B will not be displaced at all. So we say that at x equals zero, y is going to be equal to zero. Uh, same thing at the other end, at x equals L, right? So x equals L, uh, we're going to have no displacement. So we'll have y is equal to zero. Now, the the the, the piece of continuity that we know is that whatever we, if we look at C from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side, it will have the same displacement um, or the same slope, no matter which side we look at it from. So we say that the way that we describe this is that at X equals one quarter L, so this point, so the point at C, um, that Y1 is going to equal Y2. And same thing that at x equals one quarter l, the slope theta one is going to equal theta two. So these are our four boundary conditions. I'm going to label them one, two, 
three, and four. That's gonna help us, I think, uh, as we go through. But basically, we're going to have to use these boundary conditions, these four boundary conditions, uh, any time that we s, anywhere that we can in these four equations. And maybe what we should also do is we'll just make a copy and then bring it down so we can see it a little bit easier because uh, we're going to be working down in this area. So let's just put that right there. And uh, all right, so now what we want to do is let's plug in what we can. So it looks like we can plug in boundary condition 4 into this expression. That'll be a good place to start because it has x's and thetas. We've got x's and thetas in here. We can get an expression for theta 2. So that was coming from this guy. And then we were using boundary condition 4. All right, what else can we do is um, we can throw in boundary condition 4 into this expression. And because we've plugged in L over 4 uh, for x, then we can compare them, theta 1 is equal to theta 2. So we get this expression here for C1 that we're going to want to come back and revisit once we get some other information. Okay, what else can we do here is looking at this guy, uh, we can plug in, looks like uh, boundary conditions 1 and boundary conditions 3. So we find out that C2 is going to be equal to 0, and then we're going to be able to row in boundary conditions uh, 2 and 3 into this expression. So we get an expression for C4 and then also because we're dealing with uh, at x equals 1 quarter L, uh, y1 is equal to y2. So then we can set these equal to each other and find an expression for C3 which is negative 11 over 128 PL squared. Awesome. So again, that Y1, that came from there, that Y2 came from there. And uh, now what we do have is we have an expression for each of our integration constants, C1, 2, and 3. So we can use them now to, we can basically start plugging in C3 into each of them, and we'll be able to find out what the rest of them are in terms of P and L. So now we have each of our integration constants, C1, 2, 3, and 4. And now what we want to do is we want to grab our original expressions here for theta1, theta2, y1, and y2, and we want to plug in all of those unknowns for c1, c2, c3, and c4. And now we have two separate expressions for the displacement at any point in the beam, so for those uh, areas where x is less than l over 4, and then for those areas where x is greater than l over 4. And then also we have the same, we have two different expressions uh, for the slope uh, on either side of that l equals 4. And I'll just show you down here really quickly that uh, we can use either of them to calculate the slope or displacement at x equals l over 4, because if you remember, um, that was the original goal of our problem, was to find the displacement and slope at point C here. So if we do that from either side, we get theta at x equals L over 4 to be negative PL squared over 32 EI from either side. And also from either side, we calculated it uh, for the deflection, y at, at x equals L over 4 to be negative 3PL cubed over 256 EI. And again, we can calculate that from either side. Um, now, just notice that that is the deflection and the slope at point C. Uh, that was the original question, and it took us a lot of writing to get there. Um, notice that because theta is not equal to 0, this is going to be a non-zero number, that it's not going to be the maximum deflection. Um, that's just something to notice that the maximum deflection will occur somewhere over to the right and uh, so just notice that it's not occurring always right at that point for us. If we found that uh, theta was equal to zero then we would know that that's the maximum. So there you go. Uh, like I said it seems like an easy problem but there is a lot of work that goes into just finding out the slope and deflection at some point and there's probably a reason why these common ones like a point load at L over 4 are listed just in the front or back cover of your Mechanics of Materials textbook.